Hello, my friends, it's Jill Osborne from the IC Network. Now that we understand that the great majority of IC patients do not have a bladder disease, but in fact have what we call hypertonic or very, very tight pelvic floor muscles, we're spending a lot more time asking, well, how should we be treated? Well, thankfully, earlier this year, brand new guidelines were released that offer a three-step treatment protocol. Now, step number one is always going to be hands-on physical therapy. Why? Because it works and it works well and research proves it. More than 66% of patients who receive physical therapy respond favorably to that therapy. Now, generally therapy will last from eight to 12 weeks. Sometimes patients need more therapy. I'm one of those patients because I had an old, old pelvic injury that has taken time and I still occasionally go need to do physical therapy if I do something that will accidentally tighten or injure those muscles again. Now, of course, your physical therapist can discharge you once you're getting better. Once your symptoms are stable for three, four months, then they can send you back home where you can do some stretching that they might suggest, maybe do some yoga. Of course, we always want to get any bowel issues that are under control too. Now, the second line of treatment is going to be either a vaginal suppository or trigger point injections. So what's up with a vaginal suppository? Why would we put a medication directly into the vagina? Well, because it's the easiest and quickest way to get to the pelvic floor. And so it's very popular now to, for doctors to prescribe a vaginal Valium suppository. Why? Because Valium acts to relax the pelvic floor. This is ideal for patients who get pelvic floor tension or spasms after intimacy, for example. Now, if you happen to have tight little bundles of muscles that we call trigger points, they can do what we call a trigger point injection. That's where they inject a little bit of an anesthetic into the trigger point itself so that the physical therapist can massage it more thoroughly and try to resolve it. Trigger point injection should not be done consistently if you don't respond to the first one. Generally, they say, give it a shot. If it doesn't work, then you're done with it. Now, third line therapies can include Botox or neuromodulation. Now, Botox is not FDA approved for pelvic pain or IC, but it is used for a lot of other medical conditions that involve muscle spasms, such as TMJ. And generally, doctors can inject Botox into the pelvic floor to try to get this pelvic floor muscles to calm down. And kind of last but not least, if, if things are not working well, they, your doctor could consider something called sacral neuromodulation. This is where they implant leads down by your sacral nerve and they might, and will attach a generator to it, basically a TENS unit to it that will deliver a mild electronic impulse to the nerves just to try to re-regulate all of the nerves that are controlling this tight pelvic floor. Sacral neuromodulation though is not approved for pain and the guidelines really only recommend that they be considered in patients who also have other urinary issues. So the great news is we have new guidelines. This is going to help patients around the United States. This will validate your need for pelvic floor physical therapy. Our biggest barrier is just getting that referral from your doctor and of course finding a physical therapist. A great place to look is a website called pelvicrehab.com. That is a database of physical therapists who have received the correct training in pelvic floor work. If you have a physical therapist who says you need to do Kegel exercises, they have not been trained correctly. Both our IC guidelines and these pelvic floor guidelines say strengthening should not occur. Kegel should not be done. Instead, the goal is to relax and to release these muscles. Listen, I hope that this helps. And if you're looking for more information on IC and or pelvic floor tension, come on over to the IC Network website. We have a lot of great resources for you. It's at icnetwork.org.